Today's video is a follow-up on the one we done on the MG ZS EV model refresh approximately four weeks ago. When we done that video, some of the details of the refresh model were still sketchy, so we now got a correction to make, some answers to questions we had back then, as well as some interesting new info we found out from drivers in the UK. So stay with us as we sit in our outside studio here on a beautiful Queensland summer's day. Welcome to Electric Car Australia, the Aussie YouTube channel for those wanting to learn more about EVs and sustainable living from a local EV owner. Now, our regular viewers will already know this, but I wanted to say as a reminder, we're totally independent, we're not sponsored by anyone, and our thoughts and ideas we discuss are our honest opinions based on our experience and knowledge. And on that note, we've recently noticed a lot of new YouTube EV channels popping up, churning out tons of videos with slick productions and desk jockeys who don't own an EV or have any personal experience with EVs. So we think it's just not cool regurgitating other people's work of independent journalists and YouTube creators who have taken heaps of time and effort to create their content so we just wanted you guys to be conscious of that when you're browsing YouTube for your EV info. Okay, rant over, so let's get into the good stuff. As mentioned in our previous video, the MG ZS EV is currently Australia's second most popular EV behind the Tesla Model 3. And our regular viewers will know we own a ZS EV ourselves and we pre-ordered that back in February 2020. And when it finally arrived in November, 2020, it was one of the first customer delivered MG ZS EVs into Queensland. So when we heard that MG were releasing a refresh to this model, we were keen to check it out. But guys, just because we own an MG, we know that they won't suit everyone and that's okay. It's a very personal choice. So as mentioned, our aim is to help Aussies become more comfortable in going electric. And I think giving basic EV info so you can confidently ask the right questions when you're talking to your EV car dealer and knowing what to look for when comparing different models is important. So armed with this, this info, we think you'll be well on your way to choosing an EV that best suits your lifestyle. So we hope by highlighting the improvements and features of the upgraded ZS EV, you can use this and apply it when comparing your preferred EV. So if you're wanting to learn more about EVs, I really recommend the latest issue of the Renew magazine. Now look at disclosure, I am a member of the not-for-profit uh, publisher of this magazine, but it's a fantastic edition. And it's got some great articles for EV newbies. So please check it out. We'll put a link in the description section of this video. And the authors of the EV articles, uh, Bryce Gatton and Lance Turner, are fountains of knowledge when it comes to anything EV or electric technology. So yeah, please check it out. Um, it's also got a great article on the Toowoomba EV and e-bike expo, which was held back in August of this year. And we'll include a link to the video we made of that event because we went out there and had our car on display. So also check that out. Um, the link will be up above. So look, sorry it's taken us so long to get to the refreshed model um, bits. So look, firstly a correction from our previous video. So I mentioned that the um, braking system had been updated in the refreshed ZS EV and it now had um, KERS braking or regenerative braking, and I'm getting tongue tied around that word, um, when you were using autopilot or adaptive cruise control. Um, that was incorrect, so apologies for that guys, um, we got some wrong information. So the refresh model is the same as the current model. When you're using adaptive cruise control or the MG Pilot, you will not have regen braking, it will be the mechanical brakes. Um, some answers to some questions that we had at the end of the um, video is that um, tinting has now been added to the windows, um, so there is UV protection on the glass with a light tint, but I believe this is um, a tint that's been put on after it comes out of the factory. Um, but MG in the UK has decided to tint all cars out of the factory. Um, so when they hit the dealer lots, they will have tinting. And we'll include a video that we've done on uh, our experience with window tinting here in Australia. So we'll put that up above. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. Now look, battery preheating was another question. We didn't know whether the car was capable of doing that. Um, 
It does, which is great news. So you can precondition the battery. So what I mean by that is you can warm the battery up. So if you're in a cold climate, select uh, preheating. So let's say you're 10 or 15 minutes away from a rapid charger on the motorway. You turn that on, the car will start to preheat the battery up, which allows you to get faster charging. Not so much of an issue in Australia here. Um, maybe if you're down in Victoria or Tasmania, up in the Alps uh, of New South Wales, it, it might help but um, generally it's not a feature that would be used too much in Australia, but it's good to know it's got it. Another question we didn't know the answer on was a heat pump for the HVAC system. So a heat pump is a more efficient um, way to heat and cool the interior of the car, but it is quite expensive to put that feature in. So the refresh model doesn't have it. It stays with the PTC heater. So the fruit, so what I mean by fruit is that's like a boot under the bonnet of the car. So what that does is give you some more space to store some bits and pieces. Now the MG doesn't have that. That's a cost saving initiative that MG's um, decided they're gonna go with. Now, interestingly, there's a company overseas that is starting to develop aftermarket uh, fruits for these. So they're actually a bit expensive at the moment. They work out at about $350 Aussie each, and then you're up for about $130 postage. So that would be about $480 in total if you wanted to get this aftermarket um, basically a giant plastic tray that sits in under the bonnet to allow you to store your charge leads, etc. Look, let me know in the show notes if that's something of interest to you. If you've got an MG ZS EV and you think um, you wouldn't mind investing in something like that to give you some extra storage space, pop us some notes in the show notes. I have been in touch with the guys that are manufacturing these overseas. It's just a small little operation. Um, they're hand molding each one. And they did say they'd give us a better rate on a bulk buy and also the shipping. Um, so nothing to do with MG, but I just thought I'd mention it um, because it, it is an interesting addition that if you have got a ZS EV here in Australia, you might want to take up. Now look, lights in the back seat, that's a bit of a bugbear of mine. It is quite dark in the back seat when you're trying to plug uh, kids into child seats of a night. And unfortunately, there is still no lights, um, courtesy lights in the back. Ah! We just had a disaster and dropped a GoPro, guys, so <laughs> hopefully we're all back and um, on track. Now look, the vehicle to load uh, discharge rate, that was a question that we, we had. We didn't know how much uh, power we could draw out of the car on the vehicle to load system. So we've since found that out. It's 2.2 kilowatts or 2,200 watts. So to give you guys a little bit of context, the maximum appliance that you can plug into a normal 10 amp power point in your house is 2,400 watts. So something like a large electric kettle or something or a heater. Um, so it's slightly under that. So that's not too bad. So great if you want to run some power tools, if you're out on a job site um, or you're camping and you want to run some good uh, 240 volt AC stuff, or you've got a power blackout at your home and you want to plug a lead in to keep some fridges and stuff running. So. 2,400 watts, um, it's not a huge amount, but it's certainly enough to keep things uh, moving. Another thing we found out was the cost of the adapter. So the adapter to plug into the front of the car to allow you to uh, use that 240 volt electricity, it doesn't come with a car, it is an addition. Now based on UK uh, estimated pricing, it's looking like it's gonna be about 375 to about 475 Australian dollars to buy that adapter. So it's probably not a bad idea having it as an accessory because not everybody will want to use the feature. So if you do want to use the feature, you pay extra for the accessory. If you don't, it's a cost saving that you don't need to pay on the car. Another question we had was the charge port. Does it have a light? And the answer is no, it doesn't, which again is a bit unfortunate, like the courtesy lights in the back. I think it would have been quite cheap for MG to put those in and it would have been nice and helpful. I guess the benefit is now the charge port hinges sideways, it doesn't come up like the clumsy current one. So if you've got some ambient lighting around, it probably won't block it as much, um, but it still would have been good to see a light in there. What it does have is a battery capacity indicator. Um, so that shows 25, 50, 75, and 100%. So it's a little LED bar uh, light that goes up. 
So when you've got the car plugged in at the front, you can uh, clearly and easily see the uh, state of charge of the battery without having to go into the app or go into the car and have a look at the dash. Now, we had a question around the Trophy Connect and the monthly uh, charge of that. So to uh, give you guys a little bit of a refresher, um, in the UK, there's two models available. Um, there's the standard range and the Trophy uh, range, which is the top of the range. So we're not sure what version or versions or models they're gonna to bring to Australia, but all the model cars have iSmart connectivity and there's or two different versions of that. There's a light and there's a Trophy. So a, a bit of a refresh from our previous video, uh, the light version will allow you to start and stop charging, read state of charge, set charge times, etc. Set a maximum state of charge, control the climb, climate um, HVAC system, read tyre pressures. You can find your car uh, via GPS and you can also preheat the cabin. So all that comes free with the Light iSmart app. Um, software that comes with the car. Now, if you want the Trophy Connect version, has weather alerts, real-time traffic updates, a route planner, uh, live consumption, it shows charger locations, which is handy if you're getting low on charge because it gives information on um, charges in your current area and it tells you um, all the details like plug share about what types of charges are there, what plugs they've got. The only thing it doesn't show is a live status of in use, so it, it can't tell you whether the charges are in use, so you will need to use PlugShare for that. Um, and you also get the basic Amazon Music service in that, however you will get ads. So that's the Trophy Connect version, um, you do have to pay an upfront cost, which as I mentioned we'll talk about shortly, and you get all those additional features. And so this is where the confusion for me was coming in because um, MG a few weeks ago was saying that there'd be a monthly subscription for the trophy. Well, that actually wasn't quite right. There's an, around a $900 Australian cost upfront for purchasing the uh, trophy version when you buy the car. So that's a once off. And as I said, that adds all the live weather and traffic info, etc. But if you want to get the Amazon uh, connection or the Amazon subscription without the ads, you'll of course have to have a monthly Amazon account. So actually nothing to do with MG, it's just if you want to remove those ads from your trophy service, you have to have an Amazon connection as well. And if you have that, that integrates all your Amazon Prime, Amazon Music, all that sort of stuff into um, the car's infotainment system and you can control all that stuff um, from embedded in the car's info system. So again, may or may not be valuable to some people, um, so it is an option and you don't need to pay for it if you don't want to. Uh, $900 Australian equivalent, it's starting to probably get there up there a little bit on price. Um, so let's see what comes on the Australian um, model. Now let's talk about the price of the model. So um, again, we're not 100% sure on what that's gonna look like in Australia. Um, but doing some comparisons um, with the exchange rate based on early December 2021 exchanges. Top of the range trophy model in the UK, which is, um, I'm assuming, the one that they're going to send over to Australia because that's what they've done with the current model cars, is £34,000 um, before any grants. And so that brings the price in Australian dollars to about 64,000. So uh, that is quite high. That was higher than I estimated based on the European uh, model prices. Now that's the same as the standard range Model 3 Tesla drive away price here in Australia. And it's also getting close to the Korean cars. So for instance, the top of the range Hyundai Kona, it's only about $4,000 underneath that. So it'll be very interesting to see what MG price the model at in Australia. Um, but it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. So please leave uh, some comments in the show notes. If the price was around that mid 65 mark, um, do you think this would be a serious contender for your dollars or would you be looking elsewhere? So yeah, interested to see what you think. 
And on that note, if you think this video has been helpful or interesting, please subscribe to our channel, um, give it the thumbs up and also share it with your mates. Um, we started the channel just over a year ago and we've been truly humbled by the uh, amount of support, comments and suggestions we've had. So thanks guys, really appreciate it. Okay, so back into some new info we found out on the refresh model. So all models have over the air updates. Um, so that's gonna be fantastic. Um, not that I see MG doing too many software updates, but uh, it is good to know that instead of having to go into the dealer, they'll be able to just send them out over the air like um, Polestar and Tesla and a lot of the, um, the other EV companies. So that's great. Um, as we mentioned, battery preheating is available, so that's great when you're approaching a fast charger in a really cold climate, you'll be able to warm the battery up a little bit, which will make your charging so much quicker. Again, we mentioned that all models have the basic iSmart uh, functionality. And one thing about that is you can actually plan your trips on your phone at home, and then once you get into the car, you can connect it and load it up to the infotainment system. So that'd be great. You could be at home, sitting on the couch, um, planning your uh, thousand kilometre trip um, for the next day uh, on your phone. And then once you get in the car the next morning, you can just plug it in, it'll transfer and away you go. So that's, um, that's great. And also there's remote access to the interior and exterior temperature using that iSmart. So I thought that might be uh, quite helpful. So um, if you're inside and it's a really uh, cold morning and you're eating your brekkie, you can actually um, log into the app, you can check the outside air temperature, you can check the inside temperature of the vehicle, and if it's a bit cold, uh, you can start the HVAC system up and warm the car up. And of course, that also goes for in hot climates with the air conditioner. So you can see what the temperature is and you can um, turn the aircon on and start cooling it down. Another cool feature is the voice activation um, controls. So there's a fair bit of an upgrade there. So on the right hand side of the steering wheel, you've got the little voice um, button. You can hit that and that'll allow you to control various functions in the car. So for instance, you can put windows up and down via voice. Um, you can open the sunroof, etc. So a little bit of a, um, a uh, novelty, I guess, but it is uh, additional functionality that you weren't able to do before. And the infotainment system also, uh, it's looking like we'll have a DAB radio. So that will be a good upgrade as well because the current Australian model never had digital radio, which was a big disappointment. So some other things we found out uh, from UK drivers, and I'm not sure whether we mentioned this one before, but the trophy, so the top of the range model, which we're expecting will come to Australia, um, now has wireless phone charging incorporated, so that's a great idea. And also got rain sensing wipers, so that's uh, helpful. The cars appear to have better sound insulation, so everybody's saying that they're quieter to drive um, than the current model MG ZS EV. And interestingly, um, numerous people have said they're very much quieter than the um, Hyundai Kona, so that was an interesting um, observation because yeah, the, the Koreans are definitely um, leaders on efficiency. Um, but yeah, interesting that the MG appears to have better sound insulation. Um, the seats are also better. So that's been a bit of a complaint from current MG owners. And we have noticed that ourselves on really long trips, the seats are a little uncomfortable. So they're better. There's about two centimeter thicker foam in the seats and it appears to be better quality as well, has better padding, etc. cetera. Um, more of a sort of memory foam type feeling and they're definitely more comfy, so that's good to see. There's a better ride as well on the new car, so people aren't sure whether it's due to different springs or shocks or it could be the 55 profile tyres instead of the current 50 profile. But whatever it is, everybody's saying the ride is uh, better than the current model. Um, we mentioned there's no heat pump, so again, I don't think that's a big deal. The PTC heater is quite efficient and it works really well. The new models have a generation two electric motor and we did touch on this and get a banana leaf, give me a tickle in the ear. Um, we did mention this or touch on this in the, the first video that the uh, new generation motors are more efficient and everyone's saying that they have a smoother power delivery and apparently the additional efficiency is coming from tighter windings in the, the motors. 
So now let's just checking out some of the upgrades on the outside. So looking at the wheels, we did mention the wheels. They're an alloy 17 inch wheel. But interestingly, this time they're what they call a lightweight wheel. So they're not actually a decorative alloy wheel themselves. Um, to produce an alloy wheel, um, which visually looks very appealing from the outside, apparently you need more surface of aluminium, etc. Therefore they're heavier. So what they've chose to do, the same as Tesla's done on the standard range Teslas, made the decision to make a lighter wheel, better efficiency, and they've just put a plastic aero cover over it. Also the lights, now we mentioned in our other video that they had LED lights, which they do, and the feedback we're getting now is that this is a massive improvement. There's 27 LEDs in each headlight, and they also have auto high beam dimming, which is a great feature. 360 degree cameras, everyone's saying, are very sharp and focused and they work really well. Um, the towing as well, we knew that there was 500 kilo towing capacity coming with the new model. Um, what we didn't know was it's got a 50 kilo tow ball download limit. So as we mentioned, only any good for small little box trailers and bike racks, um, but certainly better than what we've got now. So finally, let's talk about some availability of these cars. So obviously, uh, as everyone will know, pretty much all cars now, there's a huge weight. Um, I've got friends who've just ordered a Toyota RAV4 hybrid here in Australia, and there's a three to four month wait on that vehicle. Um, so lead times for the MG refresh model in the UK at the moment are about four to five months. Uh, so as we said in our previous video, there's two battery sizes coming, um, but only the long range version is available in the UK at this point. Okay guys, well look, I'm starting to waffle on. So that's it for another video. I really hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it the thumbs up, share it with your mates as we mentioned. Leave some comments and suggestions in the comments section. We love reading through those. And with the school holidays um, around the corner, I'm taking some time out from uh, work to spend some quality time with the family. So probably won't be till the new year till we get a next uh, video out. So we've got a huge list of um, things and ideas that we'd like to uh, make videos on. So looking forward to a really great 2023 when we'll get uh, stuck into those. So we wish everyone an enjoyable, relaxing and safe Christmas and look forward to catching up with you in uh, 2023. So thanks again, stay safe and we'll talk soon.